So we're back again, Mafia Unveiled, John and Gene Show. And today is a very <laughs> special show for me because uh, King of New York is a show about Mark Ryder. And Jeff Nardu just did a show on this. And this is a guy that knows nothing about something that I know a lot about. So the problem with this guy is, and this is why I don't like this guy, because he's an arrogant guy. He's not, he knows nothing about the mob. He's a quarterback. He's a couch quarterback. He sits there and he reads something, he gets bad information, and he keeps running with it. So some of the things he said, he talks about uh, Nicky Barnes, and he, miss, he doesn't even know what he's talking about. He's reading something. Nicky Barnes testified and gave information against Mark Ryder the first time he was in jail. Later on, when he gets convicted again, Mark, after he did about six, seven years with his cellmate Vito, who gives him up on a second case. So I'm going to go through some things that people understand. He didn't own a, a, a penthouse on 59th Street and 2nd Avenue. It was 58th Street and 2nd Avenue. So he doesn't know the penthouse because he was never there. I used to stay there. <laughs> I lived there for a while when Mark went to jail afterwards, but I stayed there when he was there. I stayed there with his son, Greg, who was my personal friend. His son was, his younger son was also my friend. And I was locked up with Mark, with uh, Greg Ryder in 1987 for a gun with his younger brother, Michael, at the time, was only about 16. And I took the gun, and I said it was my gun for Greg because he had a case at the time. So I'm going to, so those are just some of the things that I'm going to straighten out. When a guy like Nardu reads something, and then he goes and he acts like he's part of it, and he knows something because he doesn't know shit. He gets everything that he says half-ass wrong. So... I want to get into the, to the, the story about him. Mark was a very wealthy businessman. Mark was a very wealthy heroin drug dealer. Mark did do business with guys like Herbie Sperling and some famous names. He did do business with Arnold and Fonzie Squitari. He did uh, know John Gotti very well. He grew up with them. He didn't run into them. He knew them since he was a kid. He did own a, a condo in Israel. Uh, he was very famous in, in, the, in the mob world, and he was a gentleman. He wasn't a killer. So he was charged with conspiracy of three murders. But what Nardu has no idea about, there was a power struggle in Harlem. And he did do business with a guy I did time with also that knows me forever, George Washington. Yes, his name was George Washington, <laughs> the president. So... When, when he talks about these guys, and he talks about Billy getting killed, Billy was in a medium. He's one of the guys that used to do some robberies. He worked with Tommy Karate. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Jeff and Duke. He's better than the other guys, though. The other but guys. He, and first, he says he doesn't say that. He doesn't know how to pronounce not one guy's name right. Well, the other ones are and worse. He, he sings er, songs he's the he best talks. one out of that group, though. And when Ruggiano... <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> even say the fucking name. No, right. but he's Excuse better than the language. other group. No, but John, he's better than the other it's, ones. It's Angelo Ruggiero, first off, dummy. It's not whatever you say it is. And he starts talking about names <laughs> like as that. if he knows what he's talking about and he's going through. And <laughs> when he tells, do I think he did these murders? No, I think he didn't do these murders. I think he didn't order these <coughs> murders. I think at his age and he's sick, he should come out of jail. And I'm going to tell you why, dummy. Because we just let 360,000 illegal immigrants in this country that are in from Venezuela and other countries that have committed rape, murder, child porn, and every other crime. And our president just let them in this country on parole. Some of them even with ankle bracelets. And the information they're getting from their countries are not even accurate, probably. We don't know who they are and why they came here. So when <coughs> this country allows 360,000 of those the worst of the worst animals in this country, I believe an 80-year-old man, almost 80-year-old man that's sick should come into this, should be paroled. And the, the nonsense of whatever agent said that he's a threat to their lives if he gets out of jail is a joke. You, got, you just let guys out, and I'm not begrudging that Anthony Santa got out or Testa's getting out or he just recently got out. 
You know, and I'm glad these guys got they out. They're under they the old law, though, right, Johnny? They're under the old law. That's why. That's the only reason why they're getting out. I mean, that's and just what Mark it is. Mark got convicted back in 87 and 88, something like that. And for the dummy, and I'm talking about you, Nardu, when you're talking about... I was with Mark when he went on a run. I was with him in Florida, and I was with him in California, and I came back to California to visit him. And when you're talking about their family, and you're talking about his wife, his ex-wife, his daughter, or his son that... that that died that they never found, you don't have the information to talk about it. You didn't know him. You didn't stay with him. You didn't travel with him. I did. You don't know his cases. And when you talk about Tommy or Sarah, so because he brought up a, a made guy. So here's the story, since you want to you read off of something you don't know about. Tommy Sarah lived up the block on Merrick uh, that was friendly with Mark, that had some business dealings with Mark. And... Greg was very close with him. We go visit him all the time. So you know, he was a guy that was around uh, Vic Arena. You're right. He was around him. But he wasn't killed because of they believed that he was had something to do with killing Greg. He slapped Greg. And he slapped Greg because Greg threw his guy through a window. Greg hmm. was a tough guy, strong with his hands. Not yeah. a killer, but he was a strong young kid. And he went to the guy's mobile phone store and put him through a window. So Tommy wasn't happy about it. So when Greg went to his house, he slapped him. John Gotti, senior, was not happy that Tommy slapped Greg, and he wasn't happy that he died. So did, yeah, did John want him to go? Yeah, John wanted him to go because Greg, so you know, called him Uncle John. He didn't say call him John. He didn't call him Mr. Gotti. He called him Uncle Johnny because he grew up in his arms since he's a kid. So John, yeah, did John want him to go? Yeah, he did. But you left out the part that you wouldn't know. When he got pinched, Tom, Tommy and Sarah, he got pinched, and when they pinched him, they, call, they caught him with a list. They caught him a list with made guys on there, a list of bookmaking names on there, mm -hmm. and amounts of money people owed. That's why he went on Vic Arena's side. Did Vic appease John, maybe, and say, okay, we'll kill him because we, you want him to kill? Maybe, but that's not why Tommy went. Tommy went because of that paperwork he had. Had nothing to do with Mark Ryder. He didn't even know that was going to happen. He was in jail. He used to talk to us from the phone, and, we, and he would call in, I would talk to him. And when Greg gets killed, Greg was in Mexico prior to that, in a drug deal with De Dennis Harrigan, was the, was the, uh, the uh, informant. They didn't know who was the informant at the time. Later on, we get information from an attorney that that's who the informant was. They thought it was Paul Silvers. They had no idea. They all got locked up in Mexico. And at that time, Greg was involved, and he, he lost about sixty, seventy thousand right. dollars. Later on, we rob Tommy Karate's apartment with Dennis Harrigan, and we get the money back, and we we make him whole again because he took that money from a family member, and it had nothing to do with Mark. Also, later on, Billy gets locked up. Billy had conversations with me because these guys were part of Crash and Carry. They would go in and crash through uh, uh, jewelry stores and fur coats and his articles and newspapers about us taking a percentage of those fur coats reluctantly from them. Chris Tarantino is one of those guys who's also involved in several murders of an armored car, of a armored car driver, also friends of his, who ends up getting life in prison. He's very sick. I'm not sure if he passed away or if he's still in prison. But he was involved with, with, with Greg Ryder. He was involved with Billy. He was involved with Tommy Karate. When Greg has the problem with Tommy Karate over money, Greg meets with me at Stringfellows with another guy named Hunter Adams and his younger brother. And we had a conversation, and I told him, don't go meet anybody. It makes you question, how do people say you're lying when you have so many names and facts? Honestly, because you're very good with names and stories and details. Because I spoke to Eddie Recker, and Eddie Recker told me, he goes, Gene, he goes, I'm a, since I'm a kid, I've been following this kid around. I used to pick up bullet shells from them when they were having shootings and things like that. So how do these people say that you're a lie and all this stuff when you have all these names, details, facts, actual victims? How do they make the victims not appear? Because anybody can be what this one not do. Is they act like they know what they're talking about because they talk like they like they really know something. No, I'm not saying Jeff to do. I'm, well, I'm, I'm talking saying about anybody. Any how, how does anyone any call you? And I'm not just saying this because we're cl we're close friends. I'm saying this because. If we're saying this, we're from these areas and all these people can co-sign these shootings and violence and the only ones that say it's not true is the Gottis or somebody out of that camp, 
How do these people not sit back and say, oh, he's not a fake, he's not a fraud? When you when somebody's saying they shot 30-something people and they're giving you names and facts and where it happened, you actually have a fucking victim. We had a guy on the show that he shot. The guy openly admitted, yeah, you shot me. So where is the lies coming? I don't want to know where he's lying and fabricating. If he hung out with John Jr. every day like he did, and they were going to kill Paul Castellano, you don't think that John Jr. is going to say, hey, we're going to kill Paul if that's his right-hand man? Because John Jr. knew about it, obviously, right? I mean, come on. It's like, even though, I'm just saying, but where do they come up with that you're a liar? Well, because the, the people that are talking, first of all, they're out of the Hey, loop. wait, let me finish. Every person that I grew up with, and I'm from that area, knows you. My mother, my aunt, every single person that I know says you were the worst guy around, but you're always lying. And that's not just me just trying to make him look like he's not a liar. If I'm telling you guys, I'm from, you always say I... Don't lie about nothing, right? I'm telling you, the guy was a legit fucking Rambo. What is there to lie about? How can he give you crimes and things? I hate to change the subject, but I've been getting a lot of mail. How is it that you people talk shit and say he's a lie, he's full of it, when the guy has confirmed things? I'm not, we're not bragging about it. We're telling you stories, and you're saying, oh, it's a lie. How is it a lie? There's, there's records of he's going to say that him and a cop killed the guy in a car, and it's a lie? I don't understand you people. Do you really got to start thinking with your heads and stop believing everything you hear? Okay, the fact is the matter is that we're from these neighborhoods. These people that talk are not from these neighborhoods. They just get second, third hand information and then make him look like he's full of shit and we're all liars. Meanwhile, we know names, details, and facts and crimes and everything. So really start thinking about that, guys that watch us, all right? Yeah, get back to it. So uh, I'll start back where Billy goes to prison and he gets hit with a shot. Actually, he was only there for a short term and he was going there on a violation, I believe. And he gets hit with a shot, and they send him to a penitentiary. At that penitentiary, so people know, he does get killed. And Mark does get accused of paying uh, Aryan Brothers. And it wasn't 10000 it was 5000 of uh, having Billy killed. Yeah, because he got his brother killed. I mean, no, you know, so, but it's, fine, not, it's not accurate anyway. Well, I'm just saying, but even Billy, if he did. Billy, and he's, Billy was running around with Tommy. They made a lot of enemies. They robbed a lot of guys. They were killing people they for no reason. They were killing people. There was a hit list of guys that wanted to kill Billy. Absolutely. When Billy was on the phone with me, I was on Hewlett Avenue out in Merrick, and I went to a pay phone, and I told Billy, Billy wouldn't come meet me. And I said, Billy, come meet me. I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to you about what happened with Greg. He would not come, and he, saw, he just swore on the phone, it ain't me. It had nothing to do with me. Now, did I believe it had nothing to do with him? Yeah, I did actually believe he may have knew something. <clears> and I, told, I told Mark. I don't think this kid Billy did it. I do think Chris Tarantino had something to do with it with Tommy Karate. And I've always maintained that because the stolen car, which Nardu wouldn't know, was stolen from Brooklyn. And that's where Tommy's from. If it had anything to do with anybody from Long Island like Tommy or Sarah, the car would have been stolen from Long Island, not Brooklyn. That's first. You wouldn't know that because you're not a criminal, Nardu. You wouldn't know that because you didn't stay with Mark. You wouldn't know that you didn't stay with Greg. You didn't know that because when Mark went to jail, you didn't know that I was involved with Greg, still collecting Mark's drug money on the street, heroin money, from different guys. I would go with Greg and we'd go meet him. And he did most of the conversation. And I stood there with him while he met these guys and we did business. So you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that I went on a, on a run with him. You wouldn't know a, a woman, Rosemary, came with us. So when you, when, when you guys tell stories, when you don't even know what you're talking about because you read it somewhere or some other imbecile told you a third or fourth hand story, and when you judge and you say, I don't know if he should get out or anything, he probably did the murders, he didn't do the murders. He wasn't a killer. Everybody knows he wasn't a killer. And anybody that fought within that regime of people, whether it was the protege of Nicky Barnes or was it his ex-girlfriend or the boyfriend, this is Harlem. People were killing each other left and right in the 80s. Did he maybe like them or dislike them? Who knows? Right. But do you know how many guys are killing each other for the power, for the control, for the money? To, for them to even say, and I don't care what conversations or tapes they heard, I stayed with the man. I was in his condo. I was in his, I go out drinking with him. He was a, a womanizer and, and all those things, but he was a good father to his kids. He loved his kids. He loved his daughter. And so for the people that, talk when you're telling these stories. And I've told the story about him prior to this. He was a tennis player. He was a well-dressed guy. He was a soft-smoking guy. He was Sally Ruggiero's good friend. The, the biggest, one of the biggest drug deals ever in the mafia history. 
Was he a drug dealer? Should he went to jail for jail? Yeah, he'll tell you he was a drug dealer. He got convicted for drugs. He should have did what he, any other drug dealer would have did. 20, 30 years, he should be home by now. Right. And he, he shouldn't be that again. I believe it's called an 848 where you get, king you get li life with no option of parole. No option. It's the king. I think he got this king pitch status. And he from. is sick and he is ill. And, right. and, he's, and you know what? None of us live good lives. And he's one of them. Didn't live a good life. But he's not that 35-year-old guy running around on the street no more. He's 80 years old, no different than Oscar Lugo. Right. So when you're saying about my opinion, I've said this over and over. These guys, when they hit 80 years old, 75 years old, there's got to be a point Listen, where you got to free you them. Could, you could even say this. Anthony Setta, <laughs> these guys killed dozens of people that coming home. And they didn't let him out. These guys killed dozens and dozens of people. They were fucking brutalizing, chopping people up, eating spaghetti and meatballs and hacking you up. <laughs> but when you don't want to let these guys out. I know. And you want to let 360,000 unknown what they did. You don't know if they cannibalize children. You don't know if they rape children. And you let them in this country. And all you people out there that are paying your taxes, it's illegal what they're doing. They're taking our tax money and they're sending these people into this country Behind your backs, they're flying them in in the middle of the night and they're yeah. dropping them off in neighborhoods. And then they want to know why other kids are getting raped, other girls are getting raped, why girls are getting killed, why there's all kinds of homicides. They don't know who they are. They know nothing about their history. And then you don't want to let an eight-year-old man out? I'm not saying that any of these guys were innocent and they shouldn't have went to jail. I'm saying at a certain point, when do you want to let them out of jail? Never. And there's no real proof that he did any of these things that he's being accused of. And I personally don't believe it. And I know some killers. He's just not one of them. So, you know, when not do, you want to talk about and, and you want to judge him and say, in my opinion, what's your opinion on you, moron? You, you don't know anything. You read something and somebody that doesn't even know what they're talking about because you didn't get anything right. Not even where he lived. I said, so, and when you talk about take six, that's where he took us shopping. That's where we bought all our clothes. When he took us to David Nadler in Brooklyn, that's where we got a, a, um, our shirts with our initials in it. When you talk about La Camellia, that's where we ate dinner. When you talk about Bruno's on 50, a second, 58th and 2nd, that's where we ate dinner every day. You were clueless. When we went to Club A, that's where we went and hung out with Sherry Belafonte, Harry Belafonte's daughter that he was good friends with. So when you're talking and you don't know what you're talking about and everybody watches you guys, that, well, well, some people watch you, I have no clue why they watch you. You're just a good bean shooter. You go up there and you <laughs> bean shoot like you know what you're talking about. And you sit there with the camera in front of you and you talk like, and you sing song like, you, like you're some broad. And then, and then, uh, Reggie, Ruggie, Giorgio, you don't even say his name. He was, and you just make up your bullshit. Like you know what you're talking about, but you don't know a thing you're talking about. You know, you're, you're clueless what you're talking about. So, and the reason why they call him King of New York, so you know, is Christopher Walken did a movie and he starred in it and it was basically about the life of Mark Ryder. Not basically, that's what they based the movie off of. So you know why they call him King of New York. So get some of that straight. And the next time you talk about somebody I personally know and their family I personally know and I grew up around and their son's body was never find, found, mind your business if you're not going to be accurate in what you talk about. That's all, guys. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. You can follow us on Instagram at Gene Barello, Johnny Light. Thank you for watching.